Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the shed. I'm Lonnie. It is Saturday, and uh, I finished listing all of the makeup and all the jeans, all the Hot Wheels, all that stuff is listed now. And last night, I put all the makeup and jeans on 5% sale. Just a little bump, just to see see what would happen. And uh, in a, about a 24-hour period, I sold 28 things, which is pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and... I've already pulled half of those orders here. We'll look at those in a second. But I did have um, a few questions about how I was storing the makeup and it's kind of it's kind of uh <clears throat> it's it's organized well but it's all over the place I have a box here a box here and they're all numbered see I have boxes here 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 and they are all over the place I have some boxes here I have a box there I have a box here uh, I have a box, a couple of boxes here. I have boxes here, here, here. Uh, where else? Oh, I have a box here, here, there, there. Bunch of boxes there and there, 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 there. <laughs> and oh, this is one too. And then I also have some in. The drawers here here and here and um it's gonna work out fine i think i actually did something similar with the hot wheels cars and i initially had these carded hot wheels in boxes one through five one two three four and five i had them and now i've um i've condense that down to two boxes and that's what i'm going to end up doing with the makeup is like when these two boxes here are both about half full or i can fit them all into one box then i'll choose one of the boxes and put uh four comma five on it and then the other box i'll just use for shipping or something and then again like if three and that that box I could combine then i'll do that the same thing with those so it just it'll just keep on combining down until uh they're all gone so that's uh that's how i'm doing it and then like if i come over here i've i actually got smart and started putting all the uh putting all the label side up so i can read everything real easily see on the small stuff like that i can see the shades there pretty easy and uh yeah it's not too bad i have some other ones where it's not quite as good like this uh one of the early ones i did right here it's really bad as a matter of fact i probably need to redo that it takes me a minute to find stuff in there every time i go to pull something but yeah that's the uh organized way or the way of that way that i've organized all the makeup and here's the stuff i've got pulled so far Got this little Hot Wheels sold at auction for twenty four forty three the other day. Um, a makeup that sold for fourteen ninety nine. This is a Louisiana State University yearbook that I took a best offer of forty two dollars on. I've had it for a pretty good while. Um, I don't even remember how much I paid for it. But the reason that it's desirable, it has Pete Maravich in it. Pete Maravich is in this yearbook. So um, those used to be worth a little more. I think fewer and fewer people want Pete Maravich stuff these days, though. Uh, some more makeup sold for $79.99. $13.99. Some jeans at $27.99. This, is, this stuff all sold before I put it on sale. Uh, some makeup for $13.99. Some jeans for $33.99. And then, okay, this stuff was on sale. Uh, $37.98 it normally would have cost before the sale it would have cost about $40 so it was a couple of bucks cheaper um, $42.74 for this one $26.59 for this one $56.99 for this one 
$23.74 for this one. And then some jeans for $28.49, which were, these would have been $29.99 plus shipping before the sale. So I'll get this stuff packed. It's some makeup for $14.24, some more for $47.49. $28.49, $14.24, this one for $42.74, some pricey ones here, $23.74 for that one, sold some jeans for $33.24, these are all on sale prices now, $14.24 for this guy, $17.09 for this one, $27.54 for that one, $25.64, $22.79, this big one here, $47.49. Pair of jeans for $26.59. Uh, this one for $18.99. And the last one for tonight is $26.59. This one. And don't worry, I only have about two, eh, probably about 2,000 more pieces of makeup to ship. And I have one more order to pull tonight. I checked the other store. Thank goodness, because I had something that sold there. And I just need to figure out where... Ah, it's, this, it's here. It's in the box. Oh, it's actually right here. It's this watch in this Plano case. This is a Department of Justice uh, INS El Paso, Texas watch. You can see it's running. Well, you might be able to see that. I don't know if I have a good focus on that or not but anyways this watch sold for $29.99 plus shipping on top it's the next day and I'm pulling more orders <laughs> more makeup and other stuff but mostly makeup uh some higher higher value stuff today $60.79 for this one $23.74 here sold a legend of the five rings deck for $12.99 free ship uh $12.34 for this one Sold this, um, what is this? Oh, a Pontiac GTO for $39.99. Sold this makeup for $18.99. These two for $94.98. That's a good one. Uh, this one for $14.24. This one, for some reason, $118.74. I had like, I had like four of these continuous coverage makeups from Clinique that were just like super high value. Like you could have bought these at the retail price before they even started doing all the closeouts and stuff. Um, before they started liquidating, you could have bought this and made a nice profit. Uh, so that might be something to look out for. I have some other, this one is Porcelain Glow. I have another shade that I have three of um, that I'm waiting to sell too. This sold for $21.84. These two sold for $30.38. A pair of jeans for $21.84 plus shipping. Then last makeup I'm pulling right now is this one for $40.84. Also sold, had this for a while. Um, Y'all, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you might have seen me buy this. Uh, I sold this barber shop sign, Il Barbier. If I'm saying that right I think that's Italian uh, it's a light up sign Let's see if it still lights up yeah it still lights up you can see it not super bright but uh yeah I got a hundred dollars plus shipping on top for this thing and I'm gonna pack it tomorrow glad to get it out of here though well here's everything I got going out so far Q&A time uh, first one from Will. Hey, Lonnie, does it ever concern you when you have more inventory coming in than going out? I'm in that spot because our sales are down for some reason. Um, it doesn't concern me. Like I said, recently, what I mentioned in the last video, recently I bought just a ton of inventory. I bought like 238 Hot Wheels, a bunch of stuff from a private pick, a uh, couple hundred pairs of jeans, 2300 pieces of makeup i bought that all within two weeks so i was feeling i wasn't concerned i was excited but i was feeling a little bit of pressure to get that stuff listed as quickly as possible with that big outlay of capital 
uh, but it's cyclical. Like I run through cycles of buying a lot, then I run through cycles of not buying anything at all. Like if you've noticed, uh, I haven't bought anything in the past, I don't know how long. I haven't bought a thing in like three weeks. All I've been doing is listing, 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 selling, packing, shipping. Like that's all I've been doing. So it's a cyclical kind of thing. Um, but no, it doesn't concern me just because I like the stuff that I really spend the big bucks on. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in it selling. That's why I bought it. Uh, Stump Knocker 22 uh, is, mentioned, is talking about how FedEx... FedEx has been adjusting uh, the cost of the shipping a lot and and whatnot. And I've heard I've heard a lot of people have that problem with FedEx. Um, I think I had it happen like one time. The reason I don't use FedEx Ground anymore is because I had trouble with the pickup locations. The actual FedEx place is about thirty minute drive for me, so I don't I can't drop off there. Walgreens was a pickup place or a drop-off place and they became unreliable. Office Depot, it took a little it took a long time. Once I found out I could ship via UPS, there's a UPS store that is very very quick to drop off. I've never had a single problem with them. I haven't had them adjust like the shipping that I paid and I pay it right through PayPal and they're they're always like either a little bit cheaper or sometimes a little bit more but usually right on par with what fedex ground is i've had better results with ups ground than i have with fedex ground overall so i've heard a lot of people talk about fedex like changing the prices after after the shipping and i imagine a lot of times people are fudging the dimensions they're not rounding up or whatever and that's probably a lot of the problem uh, but there might be some other stuff going on too but if you're finding that happens a lot, use UPS Ground. You can sign up for it through PayPal. Just Google UPS PayPal account, and you can sign up for a UPS account through PayPal, or you can go get your own UPS account through UPS. But you get great rates buying your shipping through PayPal. That's what I do with big stuff. Like this Il Barbier sign, that's going to go UPS Ground. So... That's what I recommend you do. Mr. Cute Stuff. Uh, I was wondering about if I should sell internationally. What are your thoughts? Um, out of all this stuff that's in here and in here, I think I have about eight things that are going internationally. Um, so I believe in shipping international usually. Now, a couple of months ago when the postal situation with the COVID stuff was really sketchy, um, I quit shipping international myself a lot and I would only offer global shipping. But now I've opened it up to do a simple export rate again via um, pirate ship. This stuff right here, this chart right here, where it goes a half pound to four pounds. Here's the Canada rates, here's the rest of the world. Google simple export rate if you want to know more about that. The only thing I would caution you about international shipping is um, if you're, especially if you're a new seller, you have to make sure that what you're selling internationally, especially since the postage is going to cost a lot more, you have to be real sure of the product that you're shipping. Because if you get it wrong, you're liable for you have more at stake as far as the shipping goes. Uh, you also need to remember that if you use something like simple export rate, um, a lot of times you may have issues with customers don't think, think that your shipping also includes the duties that their countries charge, and it doesn't. Like when I ship simple export rate, the customer is still responsible to pay duties to their country, that their country is charging them. And a lot of times I'll get some pushback, say, hey, uh, I have to pay X amount of dollars. And I'm like, well, yeah, you do, but that's between you and your country, not between me and you. That's not something I take. Because if they buy something via like, um, if they do the global shipping program, that those duties are baked into the global shipping program cost. So also 
um, when you do like simple export rate, prior or uh, first class package international, and you ship it yourself like I do, then there is no insurance. Um, so if you want insurance, you have to add insurance and pay for it yourself. Of course, you can charge the customer for that too, but um, it's not included. So just, you know, I mean, you have to be more careful when you ship internationally, but it can definitely increase your business a lot if you do it. Uh, for, for like beginners, do it, be careful, of, or maybe just start with GSP and then as you get more comfortable, get more experience, branch out and shipping yourself. I think shipping yourself can open up um, a lot more sales though. Uh, Jay Lee, Lonnie, when you use USPS flat rate boxes to construct your own size box, does the post office charge you a flat rate box fee? Okay, so I got like, I think seven people asked me about this last time. Uh, whenever I did a Franken box, I put two boxes together and I got this question over and over. You can't use flat rate, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not using flat rate. People assume, I think they see because these are the same boxes okay this is the box that i use typically when i'm doing the franken boxing this is what i used in the last video i use a large mailing box and i think that people see this print and they think it's a large flat rate they just, they make the assumption it's a large flat rate it's not i don't use flat rate uh products to franken box or regional rate products to franken box so um uh, yeah, I don't do it. So that's that's the answer to that question, basically. And I think, like I said, six or seven people uh, made the same comment. I do not use flat rate products to do it. Now, can you use flat rate? I don't know. I, I, like, I look for path of least resistance. Um, some people say you can. Some people say you can't. You may get away with it. You may not. Uh, if you do it with, you know, using not flat rate products, uh, then you don't have to worry about that. So that's that's the way I, I do it. Okay, last question, I think. Yes, last question. Is Pirate Ship really that much cheaper than USPS and where do you take the packages? Okay, Pirate Ship actually is USPS. It's actually United States Postal Service uh, postage. You're, you're buying United States Postal Service postage through Pirate Ship and they're earning the way they make money they get a small commission on all the postage they, they sell. That's how they make money. But it is actual USPS postage. So all of the um, all of the all the labels that you print via pirate ship, they are to be dropped off or picked up by the post office. Uh, that's where they go. So is it cheaper? It's sometimes it's a little more. It depends on what what your what you're shipping and how you're shipping it. Uh, like a padded flat rate envelope, like one of these that I ship jeans in a lot. Those are actually cheaper for me typically to buy via eBay because I get that top rated seller discount and it's actually cheaper than pirate ship. Uh, other stuff, like if I'm doing cubic rate shipping, um, which I'm not going to go into an in-depth explanation of that, cubic rate shipping is cheaper a lot of times than the regular priority shipping you buy on eBay. However, if you're just doing regular priority shipping, a lot of times that's cheaper on eBay than it is on pirate ship. Um, other, other methods don't matter, like media rate, it doesn't matter where you buy it. So I just buy it on eBay typically. Um, the other one, which I've already talked about, is simple export rate is cheaper than uh, eBay typically. Now eBay has this other thing uh international something or another it's another service similar to gsp except it's cheaper for lighter stuff and i think it's probably using international first class but i think they they bump up a little bit but they add insurance and maybe they take care of the duties on their side i'm not sure about that though because i haven't used it uh i think i maybe used it once but um yeah it just depends like cubic and simple export rate are the two things that I usually use uh, pirate ship for. Now, the, you also get commercial base price on all the other shipping services, but eBay beats some of those sometimes. 
Um, the other time I use pirate ship is when I ship like the box knives because I can't ship those through eBay because those weren't sold on eBay. Those are sold by myself. So I have to buy the postage elsewhere. So I get that commercial price on pirate ship. So hope that, hope that explains it. It's not always cheaper. Thank y'all very much for watching. I will see y'all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.